In this section, um, we want to introduce one new test and then an additional step or an alternative feature that we can introduce or incorporate into one of our existing tests. The first thing we want to talk about is testing claims about two variances. So keep in mind the two most important measures in statistics are measures of center and measures of spread. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about testing claims about measures of center, so testing claims about means and medians. Now we want to move on to testing claims about spread. And our two primary measures of spread are standard deviation and variance. We also have interquartile range in there. But in terms of testing claims, we're just going to look at standard deviations and variances. Now, keep in mind, standard deviation is represented by the Greek letter sigma. And then variance is just our standard deviation squared. So in some senses, they're very similar values. One is just the square of the other. So, so far in this class, we've primarily used standard deviation. whenever we've talked about the spread of our data. It's a smaller number, so it makes more sense to talk about standard deviation in that sense. It also has the same units as our original data, so it ha in general has some advantages. But once we start talking about statistical inference, we'll start using variance as the measure of spread that we want to consider. The reason is, and there's a lot more theory that goes into this, but the short version why is that sample variance is an unbiased estimator for population variance. Sample standard deviation, on the other hand, is a biased estimator for population standard deviation. So again, there's more theory that's behind that, but the basic idea is our sample variance does a better job of estimating or allowing us to test claims about the population variance than our sample standard deviation does about population standard deviation. Since it's a biased estimator, it introduces the potential for more error into our results. So in short, variance is our better choice once we start talking about statistical inference. So to test a claim about two variances, we need a couple of conditions to be met. We need our samples to be random and independent. We'll assume for our purposes that that condition's met, and it'll be on our shoulders to verify the second condition. So to verify that both samples come from normally distributed populations. So something that's important to note here is that these are very similar to the conditions for testing means, with one exception. For testing variance, sample size is not a factor. Even if you had a very, very large sample or two very large samples, so our, if our sample size is 25 or larger for both, that's not enough to be able to test claims about variances. We have to be able to conclude that our data sets come from normally distributed populations. So our null hypothesis for testing claims about variance, excuse me, variances will always be the same. Instead of testing the difference of two variances, what we'll be testing is the ratio of our two variances. So the null hypothesis is always the assumption that those two parameters are equal. So if those two values are equal to each other, any number divided by itself should be 1. So the null hypothesis is that the ratio of those variances is 1. Or if we wanted to write that in a different form, we'd be saying that sigma squared 1, sigma squared 2, those two values are equal to each other. So our null hypothesis, our starting assumption, will always be that two variances are equal. The alternative hypothesis then follows that it'll be a statement that 
those two variances are somehow different from each other. So that the ratio is actually greater than one, less than one, or not equal to one. But our most common alternative hypothesis, not the only one that we'll use, but the one that we'll typically see the most often, will be the claim that the null hypothesis, or claim that the alternative hypothesis is that sigma squared one over sigma squared two is not equal to one. So the statement that the variances are somehow different from each other. 